Hello and welcome to Inflatable Sup Authority's on water performance of the Jilly Air. We're at good old Nickel Mackle River where it is extremely low tide. I actually don't think I've ever seen it this low. And so today we're going to do some tracking tests, maneuverability tests, see how quick we can go, and we'll see how stable it is. Just going on the knees here. Walking side to side, pretty good. But we'll stand and we'll get some conclusive results of how this board performs on the water. Okay, now we're going to stand on the Jilly 11.6 Air and see how it goes. Okay. first impressions the board's actually pretty stable it's at about that 32 inch width which is usually a good ideal all-around width for most people starting out so I also think the rounded board profile allows it to feel pretty stable like going from side to side looks pretty good So I chose the 11.6 because I'm a bit of a taller person versus the 10.6 which is can be used for most paddlers but I just really wanted to get a height that would be ideal for me especially for a board that has some of the lesser quality materials compared to some of the other boards in the Jilly lineup as this is made of single PVC. While the other ones are made of dual layer fusion. So having paddled this board for a little bit here, it's a nice little ride, I'm not gonna lie, it's just it's very enjoyable. The board feels like a pretty stable platform throughout. Now even just kind of I want to see the bend of the single layer compared to the dual layer, so a little bit of bouncing here. Woo! Yeah, see, that's something you can instantly notice is that there's still a ripple effect whenever you're bouncing on it. And it it kind of can banana a little bit. Whew, don't want to do too much of that. There's oyster beds underneath. But I mean, for the price that you can get it, you really can't fault this board for that. Uh, it still feels pretty stable. Now, if you're a bigger guy, as I mentioned, probably want to get the 11.6 board you'll feel a lot more comfortable on it I should say bigger guy or gal uh, taller as well in that respect so now something I've been curious about with this board is paddling it at a bit of a faster pace see how it does and we'll see how much bend I can really feel on the board so I feel like once I do some more powerful strokes I am gonna notice some bend on the board uh, it's just the nature of boards that are more in the budget category. So we'll use that dock sort of as a bit of a reference, but we'll start paddling a little bit faster and we'll see how it feels. So let's get into it. Actually, I didn't feel too much bend on the board, which is good, um, especially doing those harder strokes. So it's good that the material isn't so thin that it'll make you kind of bounce off the board. Um, some of the other things I kind of noticed, the paddle is aluminum paddle. This is probably made of plastic, I think ABS, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So the aluminum paddle, it's sturdy, but 
it's the heaviest paddle material that there really is and it's something that is included with budget boards so it does make you give a little bit of that extra oomph to make the board go the same speed as if you had like a lighter weight paddle but we won't get too much into that because this is supposed to be a budget board and to be honest i think the vast majority of people just starting out they're not really interested in the highest performance type of setup or anything like that they just want to stand on the freaking board and go and yeah i mean so far the Gilly Air is doing its purpose that's for sure and stand on it pretty good haven't really felt wobbly at all it's a pretty it's a pretty solid board actually especially for its price point i'm pretty impressed so far so now we're gonna do some tracking tests see how well this 11 foot 6 frame with the three fin setup works so we're gonna aim for that dock which you probably cannot see from the gopro because it's zoomed out <laughs> but nonetheless there is a dock there and we're gonna aim for it we're gonna see how many strokes a side we can do each side so let's get her even here okay let's do it so one two three four five six Seven. I'll say seven. So now let's go the other way, see what it is. Just correct a little bit here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, about seven strokes aside just doing sort of like a casual pace which is pretty good i'd say especially for a board of this price point um a 10-6 board will probably if i was to estimate without me testing it i'd say probably be about maybe five six strokes aside just because it doesn't have the extra foot length like the Gilly air 11-6 does but overall pretty good stores score especially for a beginner board we're kind of starting to see the tide come in now a little bit it's just this is at the peak area of low tide here and so the water's starting to come in board still feels pretty nice to paddle even whenever the water is now the tide is to your back a uh, quick little tip if you want to go and there's not a lot of people around highly recommend doing it on cloudy days um there's like i haven't come, come across any boats any paddlers anything like that people just like to associate paddle boarding with sun so if you're a little bit of a loner like me <laughs> um highly recommend going on a nice cloudy day there's a little bit of specks of rain but not too bad just want to show a little bit more of the bend for the uh, Gilly Air 11.6. So as soon as you start to kind of start bouncing, you, you can start to feel like, you can start to feel the board flexing underneath your feet even when you do that. Now, mind you, the recommended PSI for the Gilly Air 11.6 is 10 to 14. I put it at 12.5 to be a little bit conservative. So, I think a bit of extra PSI would help, but I also don't want to put her over the maximum recommended direction. So the next time I take this board out, maybe I'll inflate it to about the 14 PSI mark and bounce on it again, see how it feels. But once again, you know, can't be too judgmental. This is sort of a budget board um, for those who are wondering what is the difference between those that boards are more expensive versus these ones well that's one of the big features is that the construction is a lot stiffer which means that the performance of the board will be better for the more expensive boards 
But if you just want to go paddling and get something and go, this is definitely a good board. And I would even say it's an upgrade to the majority of the Amazon branded boards that are out there. Now is a good time to do some maneuverability tests. The water is pretty still and I feel as good of a chance as any. So first we'll do some side paddles. So let's just point it at the sailboats down there. I'm sure even you guys can see that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. One, two, So about 13 and a half, which is actually a pretty decent score, considering this is a bit of a longer board and it has the three fins set up. Um, it's actually a pretty respectable score for this board. Also, I think the lightweight material also kind of helps you move the board a bit better as well. Something to note too. Next, we're gonna do a reverse sweep strokes. So we're gonna see how many till we hit to do a th reverse 360, how many it takes to hit those boats. So let's do it. So a little four and a half, five sweep strokes. Reverse sweep strokes, I should say. It's also a pretty good score for this board. Uh, once again, I think the lightweight definitely helps with this. But the thing that probably doesn't help as much as uh, your other Amazon boards that have the little slide in fins and the little 2.5 inch plastic side fins is the fact that this has five inch side fins so that adds a little bit of extra drag and actually this board also has a i believe it's a nine inch racing fin or two ring racing fin so it is a little more elongated as opposed to a lot of other fins so also something to kind of keep in mind okay so what are my final impressions of the jilly air 11.6 I personally like it. I think it's a great starter board. Um, there's not, it's not, uh, it's not, I guess, um, rickety. It's a terrible word to use, but anyway, that's the best I can come up with right now. In other words, it's very stable, um, especially for those starting out. Uh, those that might be a little more balanced challenged, I do recommend the 11.6 Air. The board blends tracking and maneuverability pretty good, which is something I appreciate. I think a lot of that is because of the board's lighter weight compared to some other heavier inflatable boards out there, like Amazon boards, etc. I also do like a lot of the onboard things that a budget board like this still includes. Like it has the action mount in the front, which I think is one of the best places to have for an action mount. It's a good place to show either the front of the board or the rear as you're paddling. It's got action mounts here and here as well. It's got a good amount of bungee deck storage, which I also really appreciate. It's a good amount to hold my water bottle sandals. There's also rear bungee deck storage near the back of the kick pod. It has a kayak seat conversion kit capability with four D-rings, which is pretty cool. And it also has a little holder for the paddle. So overall, yeah, I, if, you're, if you're a beginner, you want to start on this board, I think it's a pretty good board. Um, if you're a bit of a smaller paddler, I'd recommend the 10.6. 
as this board might be a little bit bulky for you to paddle per se but if you're someone about my height so like six foot six foot one 180 pounds this is this feels pretty good so obviously there's a bit of bounce to it um but again i don't want to go too much into that because this is for beginners so yeah thanks for seeing my on water testing of the Julie Air 11.6 and we'll catch you with another board soon. See ya.